Okay, today we are going to look at summarizing summarizing vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. So when we start to summarize this, asymptotes, vertical or horizontal, means we're usually studying equations that are rational. So I have something like ax plus some number, let's say 1, over... I'll call it B, C, X, plus D. And this is typically what happens. And maybe A is 0, so then if A would be 0, it would be just a number over X plus D. And we're looking to see what kind of asymptotes we get when we look at this general rational function. And the asymptotes come from pushing the limits of S, of X, pushing X. Okay? Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that by finding out where does X not exist where x is not, all right? And so x is not somewhere deals with the denominator of a fraction, because I have 4 over 0, doesn't make any sense. I can't draw, this would be 1 out of 4. I can't draw anything with a 0 on the bottom when I deal with a fraction. So where x is not means where this thing on the bottom is not. So if I look at this equation, y equals 1, over x minus 2. If I look at this, I know down here that x minus 2 cannot be 0. So when x is 2, the bottom is 0. And that is what I don't want. And x equal 2 is a vertical line up and down this way. So consider this. If I look at this equation here, here is y equals 1 over x minus 3. And if I look at my horizontal asymptote, which is this black line, my, sorry, my vertical asymptote, which is my black line, I can see that there is where the asymptote exists at 3. At 3. This is the domain. The, the x cannot be 3, There's, therefore I get a vertical asymptote. So the vertical asymptote, the vertical asymptote comes from, comes from the restriction on domain, the bottom of the fraction. That's when it looks like this, or even if the equation would look like this, like 3x minus 1 over an x plus 2. Again, this value here cannot be 0, and so I make it plus 2 equals 0, so x equals minus 2 is the equation of the vertical asymptote. Look at a graph of that one. Here is that equation. And you can see if I take my asymptote, it moves over here to minus 2. And there is my vertical asymptote, the bottom. All right, now, talking about the horizontal asymptotes now. The horizontal asymptotes, when I have y equals 3x minus 1 over x minus 2, if I look at this, what I have to do and I'm going to also look at this one here, 1 over x uh, minus 3. I'll make this minus 3 and plus 2. Now, vertical was where x couldn't be. For horizontal, I'm going to push x big. I want to know the limits of x. And what when I make x big, positive or negative, how does that affect the y value? Well. If I would say that, let's say x equals a million, okay? Well, I would have 3 million minus 1, which is basically 3 million, a little bit shy of 3 million, over a million plus 2. So basically, I have 3 million over 1 million. And so all those zeros would cancel, and it would be about 3 because I have a minus and a plus. Similarly, if I do on the minus, if I would go minus a million, well, it would be minus or minus, and again, I would get plus 3. And so when I push, make x really big, these ones are equally strong, and so it ends up being this leading coefficient here. So it's going to be 3 over 1. Looking at my graph of the situation here, I'll turn off my, here is my vertical line. Here's my equation. And if I move it up 
you can see that there is an asymptote at three. When these are the same power, I get the leading coefficients. If I look at the other scenario now, same argument. When there's no x on top, again, if I make x be a million, a big number, well, it's one over basically a million. One over a big number, or a big, big number, is basically zero, even if I subtract three from that big number. If I make x a negative big number, it's still one over a negative big number, which is still approximately zero on the negative side, if you allow me to make it a negative zero on the negative side. And so when I have just a number, even if that was four, it wouldn't change anything. If I have a number over x, it's going to be zero because this is so dominant, so large, that it's one over a great big number, and so it ends up being zero. So I Whereas guess to here, there's no dominant last time no domination. To here. It's going to be the leading. Component. If I have the scenario y equals a x plus b over c x plus d, the vertical asymptote is going to be where c x plus d equals zero. So c x will be minus d over c. This is the vertical asymptote. The horizontal asymptote will be a over c because these are the same however if there is no if a equals 0 then it's going to be y equal to b over c x plus d and then it's y equal to 0 as your asymptote